Hey, that's the sound of the Geordie housewife sounding like a Celtic, Celtic, Celtic Carnax, Celtic Carnax. <laughs> Shouts to the Celts about. I see people in the comments, I do. We started a little early today. Um, reasons for that or I need to get other things done later as well. So I'm trying to like make this happen, I'm trying to make it happen. So Reet, well, let us have a look. What we've got, loads of things. We've got cups of tea. We've got Ravi Shankar, which isn't Ravi Shankar in a bit because I need to drink some of it. We've also got climate denial Lazarus. We've got Thatcher's T-Shock and will DMT turn into a leftist? We've also got the price of olive oil and other things, but you cannot fit all them into just some big long title. But always, always, always know that there will be other things. Can you hear us all right? Can you see us all right? All them good things there. Who's a boot? Matt, he's a boot weed salad. Back at you. Good morning, sir. Carlos, Leon, right back at you. We've been talking about DMT in the comments there. Asked him what it turned me into a leftist. Zoe's in. Nice to see you, Zoe. Bob Grady, all the way from sunny Wales. Sunny South Wales, let's be specific. Nice to see you, Bob. Jez Hunt, get up. He's, a, he's in. Let the ceremony's about to begin, Jim Morrison. Um, I could share the stream. All that cool stuff are a bit early, so people probably didn't even know I've started. But that's that's life. If you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com forward slash cow daily. That's patreon.com forward slash cow daily for all of your supporting independent media needs. Also, PayPal link in the description of wherever you are watching or listening to this show. I'm going to stick a bit of the tunes on with people to join the stream due to the lag and um, get rid of this. Like, it's not a dry mouth, but it's borderline. And that's never good. So, anyway, Ravwa, Gannigans. Lemon bomb. That cool, refreshing drink. Much like lemonade. It's not really. It's an Eddie Murphy reference. It's lovely though. Get off that caffeine, it's bad for you. Bad for me at least. Anyway, enough of you, Ravoir. What we got for you? Plenty things. Here's, here's a thing. I just want to read this out. Because people like are warmongering. Uh, I'll try and not swear until five minutes today. People are warmongering terribles. Anyway, this is Peter Maas on Twitter. If you have a moment, do you remember where you were 16 years ago today when George W. Bush announced the US had invaded, had invaded Iraq? What was your reaction and the reaction of others around you? Native SF responds, I was in Baghdad waiting for the bombs and the city of six million was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. It was about 4.30 a.m. Adults held their sleeping kids, alert and afraid in the dark because Bush's deadline had just passed and all the dogs started barking. Then the first missiles fell. I've seen that knocking about in the past. Um, and I think it, uh, it says a lot about the people cheering for war now and wanting that to happen because that'll happen to them. Like people in the UK, most especially, just think life is just like a computer game or something, something weird. And in some respects, it is, as I will show you in this now, what quite frankly is a seamless link. <laughs> so, anyway, this is about AI. Listen to what this guy says. This is from the Evolving AI account on Instagram. Um, so check this. They had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict, like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation. Right. So suddenly AI has turned every Wi-Fi router 
into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. Lush, fantastic. Not only do we ha not get to welcome our AI overlords, they're just coming. They're just coming, come around. They're just doing like maps of the of the house. It'll be like we estimate as weeds over here. It's there, and then they'll, they'll come round with robots snaffling up your weed at the behest of Albanian drugs gangs who have supply chain dominance have invested that in. Nah, that's an all not true. But how mad's that? So anybody's Wi-Fi router can make a, a map of the house using AI now, can it? Sweet. That'll not go into the wrong hands, I'm sure. That'll be fine. Nothing will go come of that, and that's not scary. It's just a crazy old time, man. But yeah, we're here to do it together. Sure is, isn't that. Anyway, what's this? Simon Harris, TD. Sickening to hear the comments of so-called Republicans about Margaret Thatcher, a woman who was democratically elected versus terrorists. That was from April the 8th, 2013. Who is this guy? What's he all about? Well, I'm going to tell you, if you'll just bear with us. Because things need to get on the screen and they're here. So anyway, Simon Harris becomes Ireland's youngest ever prime minister. That's Taoiseach. Al Jazeera here. Get it right, come on, show the, the correct term and the correct language. Anyway, the 37-year-old replaces Leo Varadkar, who said he was quitting as party leader and PM for personal and political reasons. Ireland's parliament has elected Simon Harris as the country's new and youngest ever prime minister to succeed Leo Varadkar. Why do they repeat these things? Please, please, for content creators, make, make it easier when we're reading out your articles. On Tuesday, parliament members erupted in cheers as Harris's nomination was confirmed 88 to 69 after securing support from some independent lawmakers as well as his coalition partners, Fianna Fáil and Green Party. Oh, right. Interesting. Uh, uh, this is interesting to observe, actually, in terms of what like, a Green Party does in coalition with like right wing people. Anyway, it goes on. The 37-year-old former health and higher education minister, best known for helping steer Ireland's initial response to the COVID-19 pandemic, was elected unopposed as the new leader of the centre-right Fine Gael party last month after Varadkar's shock exit. We'll come on a bit about that in a bit. I do accept this nomination to serve as Taoiseach. Harris said, I commit to doing everything that I can to honour the trust that you've placed in me. Stock. Stock bullshit. Anyway, I think there's an interesting part right at the end here. And it's about Sinn Féin. So anyway, Ireland votes in the local and European Parliament polls on June the 7th, while the next general election must be held by March 2025. Should be one now, to be honest. Same with Sunak, you know. I just like, you know, where's the democratically elected prime minister? Anyway, uh, Fine Gael swamped a third place at the last general election in 2020, well behind left-wing nationalist Sinn Féin, which secured the largest share of the vote. In the last three years, polls have put Sinn Féin, which backs unification with Northern Ireland, the British province, as the preferred choice to lead the next government. Before Harris Varadkar was the country's youngest ever leader when first elected at age 38, as well as Ireland's first openly gay prime minister, his mother's Irish and his father's Indian, which also made Varadkar Ireland's first biracial Taoiseach. In March, Varadkar 45, so it was the right time for him to step aside. My reasons for stepping down are now personal political, but mainly political, he said, without elaborating. Um, what I'd like to point out is he did this the day after Biden and um, a meeting with the Americans. And it was also, I think, within that day or the day before where Varadkar had given a speech, um, which was basically like calling for ceasefires in Gaza and all of that. Like obviously, you know yourself, um, Ireland and the Irish people have a real consciousness and they're just better people, aren't they? Really? <laughs> but this is often what comes from... Um, populations which have been subjected to colonialism um you, you've seen that with south africa bringing israel to the uh, icj um one of those things isn't it people are all, all obviously going to feel an affinity so he resigned the day after biden there's a theory going around that um the americans went right that's enough for you pal lay off Oh, let's carry on about the Irish. So let's see, test that theory and see what Harris does. Also, as we read out, Sinn Féin, like it's not like he's obviously talking about them and a, there's a lot going on in Ireland. And I believe it's because Sinn Féin are on the, on the rise. Sinn Féin 
have got actual answers to the housing crisis where none of the rest of them do. Very similar problems around the world. You're seeing this in Portugal, particularly on the Algarve and other places, certainly the UK, definitely in London. Um, real problems, and you've got a high proportion of young people who are living at home with their parents, like much later than they would in Ireland. So you're getting a lot of people um, leaving Ireland as a result of it or um, living lives where they're not as happy as they might otherwise have been. So there's, there's discontent, and that's been fermented by, you guessed it, Steve Bannon and his pals. Because there's just a lot of this um, sort of island for the... It's just this, this sort of Britain first play, and it's been played in Ireland. It's the same shit, Ireland first and all this bollocks. So it's interesting to see what happens at these next elections, I feel. I'd really like to um, understand more, too. So from the comments. Matty, I just feel like I met out there whenever I've went out were much more politically astute. Definitely. Jez is saying, Britain and America is war mad because we've barely been physically threatened by it. The tiny amount we've sort of had, the Blitz and Twin Towers leave massive scars but barely even count. True story. And because uh, nostalgia has been weaponized, as we know, it leads to a population who often have never had a fight in their lives and don't understand violence. Good morning, Jojo. I just seen you pop up there, mate. All the best. So we're talking about AI here. Leon is currently used to create ad data and devices to even create what they call shadow profiles for people with no online presence. It's added to its data set based on audio and smart devices. He's talking about Wi-Fi triangulation. Isn't new at all. All the things everyone seems to have missed is that any smart device with an audio function like the Google search bar on all our phones. That's interesting. We're being, we're being surveilled. Don't need the UN helicopters no more. Mad times, man. That is absolutely the rajest of the raj. More of the things. Never let anyone take away your freedom because of the greater good. Freedom is the greater good. Now, these type of memes fly around and like literally anybody in, in whatever reality tunnel could be posting these now. Freedom is just such this like subjective concept now and it's been used in such a weaponized way by your bannons and all of this. You could see like a, a right wing MAGA person post this and mean something completely different and feel good about it. You could see somebody on a, a protest for Gaza post something like this and feel good about it because it means something good to them. Um, only some of the, those groupings um, care about everybody. And I'll leave you to decide who that is. But I just wanted to point this out because it's like people are like thinking in sound bites and a lot of these sort of memes and Instagram type of reels and all that type of carry on it's light on detail isn't it just makes you feel good this doesn't make you feel good though it is an interesting thread on our facebook page as well and um, shouts to joanne mccabe as well for um bringing some of the knowledge she works in bloods as well so on that basis i would say um obviously you may decide that you want to still give blood but anyway i'm going to read this out this is from the nhs what they're saying is if you've been diagnosed with long COVID or have had symptoms for over 12 weeks, then please use this entry. You've had it to, right, they've repeated that. If you've been diagnosed with long COVID or have had symptoms for over 12 weeks, then you need to wait until at least six months since all the symptoms have gone. Symptoms may be intermittent and include fatigue, shortness of breath, headaches, dizziness, confusion, brain fog, pins and needles, skin rashes. Um, I might have got a bit ahead of myself because I was like, right, oh, I don't know about this blood and all of that, but I might not have as well. And I thank Joanne for that. And I would say, like, obviously, listen to her over me because she's qualified. She works in the blood service. She's saying it's important people give blood. It is. But I did challenge her on a few things. So go read the thread. Um, I'll detail one or two bits in a minute. One of the things that I want to point out is, right, like how many people are out there just like powering on on vapors? and have long COVID and are just carrying on? How many people are going into work, never mind out else? How many people are like deluding themselves anyway and will just go and get blood? But apparently like you can't catch COVID from infected blood. That's what I've been told. That's the latest guidance and I've checked that out and that's what the World Health Organization say. However, the UK has experienced a significant blood transfusion scandal, often referred to as the contaminated blood scandal. During the 1970s and 80s, thousands of people were infected with hepatitis C and HIV due to contaminated clotting factor products used to treat hemophilia. 
Many of these products were imported from the US and included contributions from high-risk donors. The scandal has led to numerous investigations and inquiries, including the Infected Blood Inquiry, which aims to uncover the full extent of the issue and provide justice for the, those affected individuals. It's estimated that over 1,250 people with bleeding disorders were infected with HIV, and at least 2,400 people were infected with Hep C. Sadly, a significant number of those infected have since passed away. The scandal is considered one of the worst treatment disasters in the history of the NHS, and it has had a profound impact on the victims and their families. Nay shit. So, what we're researching, and also follow medical advice, but what I will say is this, right? You look, I hate to be a person who calls into question like medical advice and all that, but however, we, we, we're learning about these things on the fly as we go, and I'm finding it really, really hard to... Um, Man, I haven't even plugged this laptop in again. Nightmare. I'm finding it really, really hard to like um, plug laptops in, but also to um, just get my head like head round why people aren't cleaning the air, wearing respirators, but are still telling people to go in when you know as well as I do. There's a hell of a hell of a hell of a lot of information out there which demonstrates clearly what repeat infections do. And also, as we've seen there, there's things that occur and then they find out later. But in the meantime, there's this like stasis bit where it's just carry on as normal. And I think that's where we're at currently. Like, there's a traumatized health service. I don't think continuous professional development's happening. And a tell of that is they're not wearing fucking respirators. Which seems suicidal to me. I just can't. I find it hard. Like people with a medical degree and they're just not doing the basics. It's fucking nuts. So myself personally, um, I wonder what will come out later on in terms of like blood infections because the, the you know they're finding out like um, like I read an, another part of another study right, and it's since because the data like I was shared by Joanne was from two thousand and twenty one, I think. And I read a study from last year, and this was yesterday, by the way, because I did a lot of research for this. And the study showed that people got infected from um, organ transplants. So that that's an interesting line to go down. So if you get infected from organs, when we're starting to find out that there's like um, for quite a while, like viral reservoirs in like in internal organs. So maybe it is just organs. But if we're finding it also now in the blood, then is it something? Is it there too? I'm I'm just saying caution, precautionary principle at all times, especially now. And do you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to go and get a plug, and I'm going to plug this bloody laptop in, and I'm going to play this music, which is called dance pop. While I do it, just bear with us. See you in a bit. <laughs> Sounds of the dance bar. Nice one, right? We're back. Uh, the last show, we've just just moved spots, and obviously it's like the kind of in between bit where it's like, oh, I'm plugged it in, oh, because this isn't going to be where it's going to be. Weekend, I'm going to be sorting a room out through that wall, actually, and the sound and everything should be better. And I'll have it all plugged in like constantly, and that'll be sweet. Anyway, comments, who we use, what you're seeing. Oh, that's really cool of you, man. Thank you so much. Gareth McDonald with the £10. Thanks for a tenner, mate. Before you slate Harris, as you should for his pro Thatcher, by the way, just going to remind you of the time the Irish government sent condolences to Nazi Germany after the Fuhrer topped himself. Fair motherfucking play there. True story. I mean, there's a, actually, if you want, we can do a, a piece in the future on the history of Irish fascism because I've been finding out like loads more than I, I knew. It's, it's, it's wild times. 
so two seconds we're going to pull up some more center right Carlos, does that really exist? Are the Irish people familiar about that? Thatcher quote, genuine offensive. Sinn Féin can expect the forces from the rich corporate US far right fighting against them now. It's happening and it's been happening. I mean, a lot of these um, like so-called protests, Carlos, do you remember the one was a riot recently? Same January the 6th type of Bannon playbook. That's what they're going for. And it's to cast aspersions on Sinn Féin and trying to get them in. So that's what a lot of this refugee stuff's about because Sinn Féin are really good on like refugee rights and things of that nature. So it's all like your traitors to Ireland, that kind of like chat. Same way like the EDL street movement designed to make noise. Um, all we can hope is that the Irish people are more savvy. One of the most insidious parts of it, and that, this is where it does link into Bannon as well, but it's through the UFC. And I know, Leon, if you're listening, you might be interested in this one. Um, Dana White connected to Donald Trump. They're very um, sort of hand in glove. Trump's using the UFC as some kind of like propaganda exercise. So he's there quite a bit. He's pro- I'm not going to bet he's going to be there at UFC 300 at the weekend. And they keep staging these mad walkouts where like like – coincidentally American badass has been played I think it's by Kid Rock and Kid Rock walks out with him with some other fucking dafty and it's election year and this is very deliberate so this obviously links in through Conor McGregor who's using his platform there to um, amplify all these absolute rage packets absolute naughtiness anyway on the bloods Quite often you don't need actual blood, says Jez. You can get blood plasma equalizers. It doesn't have to be a blood type and it doesn't carry diseases. Your blood body eventually just processes it through. Class, cool, man. So that's the crack. It's like on that one, precautionary principle, because I'm just like, if you can get it through organ transplant, like I think it's too soon. And we've seen far too many like after the fact things where within the NHS, the administration and whatever, just seem to cover shit up. Lucy Letby, rah, rah, rah. But we, I, see, I, I don't think that's in, just in this sector. Look at all the different sectors and look at all the people like just munching up coin so they can have some kind of like really nice retirement and just fuck the planet and fuck the people. Now I'm saying, Gareth is saying, I, Irish relations with fascism are well-renowned indeed. A lot of interesting things around the Second World War and thing but that's by no means all of our wonderful irish contingent who are lovely and beautiful and fine read just i want to point out some hypocrisy hypocrisy it's ed balls which should surprise nobody um at stall soul staniforth is just for all he needs really great account that include any work for a while actually uh, so it says a male journalist says politicians are allowed to have a private home, a private space, and gathering outside is unacceptable. A male journalist adds it's unfair and storm his wife and neighbours and the people gathering outside just need to stop. This is from Good Morning Britain. Um, so let's put an um, uh, image above, which is just a press mob outside Jeremy Corbyn's house. So listen to these absolute hypocrites twist on ridiculously, including that absolute arsehole from the mirror who's just a stenographer for the Labour Party, unless it's led by Corbyn, of course. In the last year, we started to see, first of all, with Rishi Sunak's mm. house being targeted, and now Keir Starmer, it's about moving to as well. private homes where, you know, where they've got there family are young children, and children living. Yeah. yeah. And you, do, you wonder to yourself, what do these groups think they are trying to, to, to achieve? Because whether you agree with Keir Starmer or not, or whether you agree with Rishi Sunak or not, surely this is, you know, a step, beyond what is acceptable. It's gone far too far. They've, they're allowed to have a home. They're allowed to have a private space. Keir Starmer's got children. Uh, he shouldn't have Why? to be exposed. His wife too. But also, he doesn't have to, shouldn't have to run the gauntlet of protesters when he goes home. Listen, Keir Starmer wears Stone Island polo shirt and hits the heavy bag. He's clearly hard as fuck. Didn't worry about the parents, man. To his hand. The police have to stop this. And maybe this has to be no. in the... in the We don't want to prevent free speech and, and stop. Yes, you do. That's all you do, you fucking cunts. Curbs on marches. and all, But this is unacceptable. I think, I think he's got yeah. two young kids. He's got, yeah. uh, he's got a wife. He's also got neighbours. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, th- I, think it's, I, think, I think it is wrong and they, they just need to stop and think a little bit. It, it just mm. really worries me. You know, this is a democracy. Mm. In a democracy, you have to have people mm. who are willing to stand for... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. 
do you think these people like love the smell of just be, not even that do you believe the smell of your own shit for today's show you believe the smell of your own shit these motherfuckers are believing the smell of their own shit at this point and i think this is what happens when people just con constantly repeat amongst their own little fucking bitch ass groups these motherfuckers subverted democracy in 2017 and 2019 fucking facts i think honestly think that they're so far deep down this fucking like back scratching rabbit hole that that picture above they just don't think it didn't happen i knew, i know they knew before but i think maybe it's like you know when bad people like have to try and convince themselves that they're, they're not bad people they have to talk like this and, yeah. and, and if off. the good guys don't do it the yeah. bad guys end yeah, up yeah. becoming the members yeah. of parliament Good guys and fucking bad guys. You are not the good guys, bollocks face. And what are we saying to 21-year-olds and 25-year-olds yeah, yeah, today yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you watch the television pictures and you think, well, actually, this is a life in okay. which this would happen to me? If you were a police yeah. officer or a doctor or a nurse or a television presenter, you wouldn't expect your house and your family mm. to be targeted in this way. Yeah. Fucking unbelievable, these fuckers, man. Like, can you believe that shit? Can you believe that shit? Absolutely mental. Leon saying they're all chums. Indeed they are. Indeed. Absolutely, utterly. Carlos is saying, I looked at Paul's forehead, I'm sure I saw lines of grease dripping off. Uh, wouldn't surprise us at all. Fuck that guy, man. Seriously. Seriously, utterly, ultra fuck these people. <laughs> it's just like... I say, can you believe it? Yes. Yes, we can believe it. Anyway, if you want to support the work, go to patreon.com forward slash cowdaily. That's p-a-t-r-u-n.com forward slash cowdaily. Did it the other way around. Slaz, I did see your text the other day, and I meant to get back to you. I keep meaning to change independent on there, and you've told us loads of times, but I'll be honest with you, what, like a little while ago, I thought, oh, I'm going to keep it there just to see if Slaz mentions it again. You did. Get in. But I will change it for you this time, so nice one. And you're dead right as well. I'm just a fucking... You know what I'm like. <laughs> You've known us a long time. <laughs> anyway, now we get this. I oh, also you can do one of them super chats like Gareth before. Fucking belt that man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Reet. I forgot how we get this bloody Patreon thing off. Get off Patreon. Go away. Reet, what's this slide? Oh man. Right. Check this. This, right? I'll take this off for a minute. I'll just do a preamble for you. It's not often, right? That People own their shit when you challenge them. And as you know, um, I've got zero patience for fucking climate change denial, long COVID denial, den you know the denials, you know the Venn diagram of Bannon's people and it's like a fucking perfect circle for all this. That, right? Check this out though, right? This is amazing. So this is Rosie Leone at Cowdaily. Have you watched Climate the Movie, The Cold Truth 2024? We'd love to know what your thoughts are. This was actually on something I'm going to cover later about the price of olive oil, which I like, posted something about. So I'm like, whenever you see something like this, you just, nah, it's going to be a denial film, don't you? Just nah. Turns out it was. I haven't because I research who are behind these things, says Cowdaily. That's me. Did you not look to see who's funded it before believing lies? I then responded, um, with an article I'm about to show you, i.e. think tank contributes to climate science denial. So why don't we not just go there and have a look at it? This is from um, D Smog, who do fantastic work. So if you want to know what's going on regarding climate emergency, this is what you need, D Smog. I.e. think tank contributes to climate science denial documentary, the group which received money from BP for at least 50 years, that's BP for at least 50 years, British Petroleum, is cementing its role as a major mouthpiece for climate change skepticism campaigners say. There's a picture of Lord's North Street where the uh, Institute of Economic Affairs has its headquarters in Westminster. Who pays for that? They're very shady about it. Anyway, a senior figure at the inst influential Institute of Economic Affairs, Think Tank, contributed to a new documentary that spread numerous myths about climate change. Stephen Davis, an academic who has worked in educational outreach roles at the IEA since 2010, appeared several times in Climate the Movie, The Cold Truth, a new film directed by climate science designer Martin Durkin. 
In the documentary, Davis claims that climate activists want to impose an austere life on ordinary people, bollocks. Behind all the talk about a climate emergency, climate crisis is an animus and hostility towards working class people, their lifestyle, their beliefs, and the desire to change by force if necessary. Right, this is a narrative that oil company executives are putting out trying to speak for people like me, a working class person. So the talk in absolutes, so are all the fucking same. This is your classic classism. Like, it's directed at working class people. No, it's directed at you, motherfuckers, and your fucking profits. That's what it's directed at. And it's also directed at the fact that you've fucking absolutely destroyed the planet. And not only that, you've been funding things like this to cast shade on facts. And what that actually means is the refugee crisis, that's a massive part of what, what this is. The reason that like sub-Saharan Africa is fucking virtually unlivable is because of these motherfuckers and their bullshit. So you're seeing all these problems in like an island and, and whatever, which have also been amplified and manufactured. So it all fits in. These motherfuckers are evil, man. Don't fucking play. Anyway, in the documentary, Davis talks a lot of shit. According to the website Skeptical Science, which debunks climate misinformation, Climate the Movie contains more than two dozen myths about climate change. The film suggests that we shouldn't be worried about greenhouse gas emissions because plants need carbon dioxide. We're in a CO2 famine, one interview, he claims. <clears throat> the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, the world's foremost climate science body, has stated that carbon dioxide is responsible for most of global warming since the late 19th century, which has increased the severity and frequency of weather in climate extremes like heat waves, heavy rains, and drought. Climate the movie producer Thomas Nelson told D Smog that I see the misguided fight against carbon dioxide as being as crazy as fighting against oxygen and water vapor, and I think scaring innocent children about this is deeply evil. They really talk in this to these terms, don't they? Yes. And so do I, but mine's backed up by evidence. Theirs is backed up by money from BP via these shady groups. Apparently, CD smog about it. Steve, the IE said that Steve firmly believes that climate change is happening and carbon emissions are having an impact. His views that climate policy imposed cost politically on work class communities is entirely mainstream, i.e., publication spokespeople have support action on climate change, including carbon pricing. These people always use the working class communities fucking bit, and none of them are fucking working class. And they're doing it because if the working class got wind of what was really going on, then things would change and oil company profits would go down or people would demand the end of oil as a fuel. Because if people were really across what's happening, not, not what's coming. Like, I'm not sitting here going, oh, climate change, guys. And the way they try and talk one off, lots of just stop oil. They're not all talk ones. Not all of them. There's a high talk one ratio. But so what? I don't care. They're out there doing stuff. You got talk ones at the top of BP. They're not. They're doing stuff as well, and it's not good. Fuck all this class stuff. And um, we need a new formation of fucking. I, I said this on the show the other day. Nineteenth century fucking solutions for twenty first century problems, and a lot of people like stuck back in their fucking Rosa Luxemburg, che, che Guevara mode that they wanted when they were cosplaying before fucking the pandemic, plugging themselves back in. A lot of it noble as well, but like they're not wearing masks, which is mad when you're basically being surveilled off the police, even if you didn't care about anybody else, including yourself. Crazy. So anyway, back to back to what was being said. So this is my point, right? Rosie has said this, so I've sent this to her. You'd expect a volley of abuse in return, but no. This is Rosie. How dearly I was skeptical that I've just found and read that article before I comment on your post. I researched Director Martin Dutton, couldn't find any sniff of corruption. Okay. To be honest, I hadn't didn't research it as well as I should have done as part of me desperately wanted it to be true. To have some relief from worrying all the time. I actually like read that there when I when I first read the response, and I was just like, what a brave individual. I, I mean, like, obviously, you know, we'll go on. But to say that, like public, that's a brave thing to do, man. Do you know what I mean? Like instantly to see new information and change your view. If we all did that, then the world would just be better, man. So anyway, the Institute of Economic Affairs are a bunch of tax dodge and charity cuckoo and shitbags. And yes, it's unfortunate they funded the film, but it doesn't take away from the context of the film. It really does, Rosie, though. The documentary goes heavily into the science and the politics. Um, right. So, Rosie, it was a bit of a mixed bag, but you're getting there. And that's the thing, right? We're never going to 
like make these new formations and all of that by just taking the piss. Like I only go fully full volley into people who are extracting the urine first. Because a lot of these fuckers who go on about snowflakery, honestly, you get like four out of ten from like somebody from Gateshead and you start crying. Imagine if you got an eight or a nine. So quite often the snowflakes are the whoever smelt the delta principle. Whoever dropped the snowflake fart is the fart. Interesting times in life. Hang on a minute, I'm just gonna move some stuff about. Want to point this out? There's a couple of things on this Daily Express, and this from the Green and Pleasant community on Reddit. Check that community out; it's a good one. Bonkers rule proves why we UK should quit Euro Court. It's um, ECHR Court of Human Rights is obviously exactly what it says on the tin. If we leave that, it'd be a nightmare. And it's another um, part of this whole social engineering to convince working class people that these things are against their interests because of the woke boats or whatever the fuck they're going on about. So just see what's being said. But one of the most interesting things is in the top right here. Kate, now UK's most popular royal after her cancer bravery. I mean, like, what do you just get cancer now when you get more popular? Or is it this, is this some kind of like guilt response? Because everybody was like Wagatha Christian around the other week, which I think is totally fine, me. Do that. Don't worry about it. Just speculate. At the end of the day, these people chose to be there. Oh, God, put them there. I don't know. Anyway, this is from uh, subreddit DMT on Reddit, obviously. Will DMT turn me into a leftist? I'm curious to try it, but it seems to be used mostly by hippies, and I don't want to be awakened and wake up as a peace-loving leftist. It wouldn't be good for my reputation, thought. Good news. It's not going to do that. <laughs> um, quite a lot of people, it turns them into fucking arseholes. Um, we've mentioned this on and off, and it's just become part of this whole fucking... Um, it's becoming a bit of a right-wing thing to do, to be fair. Like, you've, you, you've got, like, um, a lot of the people who went along with the Rogan and Brand pipeline and all of the kind of subplot, like, people around the so-called intellectual dark web, jeez, they have, went, have took all of that psychedelic stuff with them. It's quite interesting because there's, like, I've spoken about this on a podcast years ago, about, like, how the hippie movement was, bit, like, this theories that it was basically just set up by the CIA um, Timothy Leary um, has been proven to have been a grass for the CIA. So it's quite interesting, and it's one to watch, um, how the sort of bushcraft scene has now become almost like a perfect Venn diagram with the DMT scene. And a lot of it's around sort of reaching and creating a new sort of formation, i.e. the Crystal Fash, which has like people who were traditionally left and traditionally right, coming together around freedom. That thing that we mentioned on that that uh, meme earlier in the show, different concepts of freedom coming together, quite often being used as a beard for people's dummy, having flown straight out, because I've had to stay in the house and I'm frightened, so I have to shout really loudly and like break all the rules because I'm scared. And if I'd just done the things for a bit, it still wouldn't have worked because the government were fucking shite. So, fuck all that. Just a little bit on this. Sorry, but what the fuck is going on with the price of olive oil, says um, somebody from fucking Snexnet. Um, I wrote about this the other day, and this is kind of like a perfect symmetry with Rosie as she spoke about it. I've seen people comment on why the price of olive oil is so expensive. It's because of the climate emergency devastating crops due to extreme drought. It's not much deeper than that. I mean, I, I, I don't know if anybody's ever been to Andalusia or um, different places where they grow olives, which make the oil. There's literally, right, no criminal gangs um, being caught getting olive oil bottles and putting like cheap uh, like vegetable oils into them because it's such a high value product now. And this is climate emergency business. Just on the climate emergency as well, and shouts to me mates in the uh, heed group um, who just aired off completely like what I, what I was saying about why there's a lot of football matches being cancelled. They're being cancelled because of the climate emergency. Gateshead had a mayor like got or just having a mayor we might even have to pay, play games before the end of the season like on consecutive days like saturday and sunday it's that bad and there was another one the other night and there was a massive kickoff for the aldershot um 
manager with and all this. King of the Aces. So, turn into a grudge match, actually, which is a shame because Gary, um, who gets on our social media, he's a shots fan. He's a good lad. So I hope it doesn't affect us, Gary, if you're listening. Um, but at the same time, yeah, um, management absolutely rinsed your away support. It was all a ruse. And I'm desperately trying to find out whether they went off on, on the piss around Newcastle because they left our stadium laughing. So they've been lying to you, Gary. But anyway, climate emergency, it's not much more deeper than that. And what I'd like to see from, um, like, let's talk about the National League, which is the league gate. It's in it's the one below the Football League, right? So the one below League Two. Speaking for the, on, for the as a fan of a National League club, I'd really, really, really like to see a forward plan for what comes next, which may include having to play games to finish the season in neutral grounds for in seasons going forward, because this is not sustainable. And also, it'll put clubs out of business too. So it's not just like a kind of like, oh, here's that hippie talking about the climate emergency. The heat will run on a shoestring, man. Like we could, like, obviously, if people aren't going to be able to go to a game on a Saturday and a game on a Sunday, can't afford it, cost of living. So it's going to hit with the gate. And that's a big part of our income. So we need a forward plan and we need people to stop like spreading fucking misinformation and lies. Because I bet you a large part that he'd support thinks climate change is a fucking myth. And you know how else is a myth? Wes Streeton. I knew Wes was a student when I was a student, says the sadly departed Dawn Foster. When he was and he was NUS president, always been a right wing lick spittle cunt. Can you guess why that's been included? Here's Matt Letissier speaking of cunts. This year's weather so far has been horrific, wasn't it? Lucky for the government that four years ago when they locked us down, we had wall-to-wall sunshine for weeks on end. It's almost like they planned it that way. Um, on community notes on Twitter, the government cannot manipulate the weather. <laughs> I don't know if that's like completely strictly true because, you know, you can in some respects. You know, you, 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 we've all seen videos of weather seed in the clouds, man. It is possible. But also for fucking Matt Letizia doesn't mean it like that. Anyway, so I mentioned the other day about Owen Jones, um, just directing it towards this article from 21st of March 2022, how Owen Jones learned to stop worrying and love Zionism. That's from the Electronic Intifada. Check it out. A um, few people wanting to give me shit for like just basically pointing out the truth. Fuck Owen Jones, man. Fuck him. So do we have any more from the plenty comments? I'll pick out some. Slaz, nice to see you, pal. In 2021, more than 75% of Greek olive oil exports went to Italy in bulk. Analysis found, in other words, Greece supplied more than 111,000 tons of the 500,000 tons of olive oil Italy import. Nuts, isn't it? Also, as well, um, what you've got is like there's water, right? And in Portugal, in this in the north, they've got they've got like a bit of water. So Spain has requested cross border. Um, assistance for water and it's been knocked back by Portugal so you know like Kevin Costner water world and all that imagine that Spain and Portugal like battling each other like for water also they're building a um, big desalination plant in the in the south well a few if it's needed as well let's be honest so Slaz is saying it represents 22 percent of all Italy's olive oil imports last year crazy times isn't it Jez is saying they'll be watering down the olive oil with CBD oil. They'd be mad if that was the case, wouldn't it? Matty's saying five or a bottle. Aye, and the rest. Five or a bottle for a little then. These big ones, man. Hold on, I'll see if we can see it on this picture. I'll pull it up, right? Just bear with us. I'll get the right one here. Do some of these. It's like 13 quid? 13 pound for a bottle of olive oil. Who can afford that, man? And also as well. These seed oils are not the best for you. It's just becoming a two-tier society, guys. Medical, food. It's like they want us dead. I mean, obviously they don't. Actually, they do. We're, we're useless eaters. Don't think we're yeah, special in their eyes. Peter the eight of the T R U N dot com forward slash cow daily. Patrons are though. They're very special. Right. Time for one more, I think. Way I. Way I, man. What we got? Hold on a minute. I this one. Just want to um just want to keep Palestine on the agenda. Just a short little clip. I haven't really got much to say about it. We all know what's fucking <laughs> Do you want another version of 
like fuck Israel because I'll give you one if you want, but like, what do you need? I think it's quite funny that I'm about to play this like dark video and Matty's still got five or a bottle on the screen. Hold on, I'm gonna have to take this off before I play this. Jesus, what a Jesus, right? Come here, hide current comment. Takes eight months to produce a goalie. Same, thanks, dude. Really needed that, <laughs> right. Check this out, horrifying. We've also been hearing from the United Nations Aid Agency for Children. UNICEF is now saying that one of its vehicles has been hit with live ammunition. In a statement on X, UNICEF said that the vehicle was hit while waiting to enter northern Gaza. So far, there have been no reports of injuries to the agency's staff. The aid agency has also added that it raised the incident with Israeli authorities. The statement went on to say that unless aid workers are protected in accordance with international humanitarian law, aid cannot reach people in need. We've Absolutely and utterly evil. Let's call it what it is. Absolute evil. Attacking an aid vehicle after everything that's been... I mean, it's just another outrage. And these are just the things what we're finding out about, man. Some of these dafties are grassing on themselves on TikTok as well, like, but like to no accountability. So it's just whipping up like just more hatred. And you, you know how people in groups can be. Imagine what the fucking IDF are like now. Horrifying and just fucking dodge pot central, isn't it? I was going to do a thing on retirement, but we'll save it for the next one. I think that's the way. Because, you know. It's not the longest show, but it's 46 minutes. You're getting your value of the day, War Chaplains. Matty's basically took over the comment section. So I'm going to leave the last word to Matty. Free Gaza. Fully agree. Thank you to everybody, but especially Gareth for giving us a tenner. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, but thanks everybody for being here. It's always a pleasure. I always really enjoy this as well. I like just hanging out with you and whatever. And I will see you soon. Soon? I'm sounding like Super Geordie at the minute. I'll see you soon. And I'm also trying to buy time when I find the closing titles by doing the fish on a dishy voice. Anyway, I loved all yous. Have a fucking absolutely fantastic time today. And um, if you can it, I hope it's bearable. Much love. Later.